We're at 8.1D, which is the going further lesson, which is in the back of 8.1. We're going to be using a scale to compute area. Given a scale drawing, we can find areas on the actual object without calculating their dimensions. Remember, a proportional relationship is a relationship between two quantities in which the ratio of one quantity to the other quantity is constant. So here we have proportional relationships, one-fourth and two-eighth and three-twelfths. These are all really one-fourth if we were to simplify them, wouldn't they be? The ratio of one quantity to the other quantity is constant. We can use the area of a figure on a scale drawing to find the corresponding area on the actual object with multiplication. We multiply the area of the figure on the scale drawing by the square of the ratio between the actual dimensions and the dimensions on the drawing. So remember we talked about in a previous lesson that we need parentheses around this fraction one-half to have this exponent here so that it'll affect the entire fraction and not just the numerator. If the parentheses weren't there, then this little two exponent would only affect the numerator. We want it to be the whole thing so that we have one-half times one-half multiplied together one-fourth. So if we have the area of our scale drawing, whatever that is, and we multiply it by the one-fourth, it will equal the corresponding area of the actual object. Now take a look at this. It says Main Street Chess Club, and we've got the scale is 5 tenths of an inch, that's a half inch, to 2 feet. That means that every 5 tenths of an inch of this scale drawing is actually equal to 2 feet. The scale drawing is a banner designed for Main Street School's chess club. The unit rate for the proportional relationship between dimensions x that's of the scale drawing, on the scale drawing, and dimension y on the actual banner, that's life size, is 2 feet to 5 tenths inch. We want to make this denominator a 1 so that we have a unit rate. So we have half inch. If we multiply it by 2, we'll get 1 inch. We have our unit here. That means we need to multiply the numerator by 2. So our unit rate is going to be 4 feet to 1 inch. An equation for the relationship is y is equal to 4x. That would be the dimensions for the actual banner is equal to 4 times the dimensions of the scale drawing. So that was part A. Now this is part B. To find the area of the white parallelogram on the scale drawing to the corresponding area on the actual banner, we find the area of the parallelogram on the scale drawing to the nearest 5 tenths of an inch. So this is 5 tenths, this is 5 tenths, this is 5 tenths, this is 5 tenths. So we have 5 tenths times 3. That's going to give us 1 inch, 1 and 5 tenths inch. And for our height, using our little scale, we can see that we've got one, and it's almost another one. So it says to the nearest 5 tenths inch, we're going to say that that's one. It's 5 tenths times two. Our base is 5 tenths times three, which is one and a half inch, 1.5 inches. And the height is 5 tenths times two. That's one inch. Now, Area of a par parallelogram formula is A is equal to BH. Area is equal to base times height. So we've got a base of 1.5 and a height of 1. That means the area is 1.5 times 1, which is 1 and 5 tenths inches square. Because it's area, we're doing square inches, remember. So the area of the white parallelogram on the scale drawing is 1 and 5 tenths inch squared. So keep in mind, we're not looking for the entire area of this whole banner. We're looking for an area of part of the scale drawing, and we're going to look for the area of that same part of the actual banner, that white parallelogram part. Okay, now we're at C. We use the equation from part A, 
y equals 4x and the base of 1 and 5 tenths inch and the height of 1 inch, we found in part b to find the base and height of the parallelogram of the actual banner. So here's the actual banner. It's equal to 4 times the base of 1 and 5 tenths. That's going to give us a 6. And here we have the height of the parallelogram of the actual banner. We have 4 times 1, which gives us a 4. So we have 6 times 4 for the actual banner. We're going to get 24 feet squared. Now, the ratio of the area of the white parallelogram on the actual banner to the area on the scale drawing is 24 feet squared to 1 and 5 tenths inches squared. We need this to be a denominator of 1. And we have 3 halves, don't we? 1.5 is a half and a half and a half. So if we split this into 3 parts by dividing it by 3, we're going to get 0 0.5. We have to do the same thing to the numerator. We're going to get an 8. Now, if we multiply this 0.5 by 2, we'll get our 1. We multiply the 8 by the 2, and we get 16 feet squared to 1 inch squared. Now, it's like a unit rate, isn't it? The square of the ratio, 16, would be 4 squared. So we'd have, we'd have 4 to the second power feet squared to 1 inch squared. Confused? Let's explain that some more. We had 24 feet squared to 1 and 5 tenths inches squared. We need this to be a unit rate with 1 as the denominator. And we can do this by dividing 1.5 by 3 to get 5 tenths and then multiplying it by 2 to get a 1. But we need to do the same thing to the numerator. So that needs to be divided by 3. We get an 8. And then it needs to be multiplied by 2. We get a 16. And 16 is 4 times 4. So 16 is equal to 4 to the second power. That's the square of the ratio. We have 4 to the second power feet squared to 1 inch squared. Now, you know I always say there's more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier. So, we have our 24 feet squared to 1 and 5 tenths inches squared. Since 1, we need this to be a unit rate, since 1 is 2 thirds of this 1 and 5 tenths, we can also convert the 1 and 5 tenths to an improper fraction. That's a fraction greater than 1. 1 and 5 tenths is 1 and a half, isn't it? And we do 1 times 2 plus 1, which is 3 over 2. Remember, that's how we get our improper fraction. So we have 3 halves inches squared. We multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 thirds because 1 is 2 thirds of this. We want this to be a 1. So we just multiply this improper fraction by 2 thirds and 24 by 2 thirds, we get 24 times 2 over 1 times 3, which gives us 48 over 3. And here we get a 6 over a 6, which is 1, same numerator and denominator. And 48 divided by 3 is 16, and that's a 1. So we have 16 feet squared over 1 inch squared. So this is a different way of doing it. Instead of dividing by 3 and then multiplying by 2 to get our 16 to 1 ratio, we can just multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 thirds. So 16 is 4 times 4. That's 4 to the second power. That's how we got that. I know this can be very confusing, but if you go back and rewatch this part D again, hopefully it'll make some sense. I hope I explained it well enough. Okay, so now we're at E. We can calculate the actual area of each triangle on the banner by using the relationship described in Part D. We had 24 feet squared to 1 and 5 tenths inches squared. We found that it was a 16 to 1, 16 feet squared to 1 inch squared ratio. And the square of the ratio was 4 squared to 1 inch squared. So we know this is 5 tenths of an inch. 
The formula for the area of a triangle is area is equal to half the base times the height. Well, if the base is 5 tenths of an inch, we would just divide that by 2 to get half of it, wouldn't we? And then we'd multiply it by 1, the height. We would get 25 hundredths times 1, that's 25 hundredths is half of 5 tenths, and our area would be 25 hundredths inches squared because we're doing area. It's in square inches. So the area of one triangle on the scale drawing is 25 hundredths inch squared. And the square of the ratio is 4 to the second power. We can multiply this 25 hundredths by 4 to the second power, or 16. We multiply 25 hundredths times 16. And remember that we've got a decimal point here, okay? We do our multiplication, and we get a 4, 0, 0, but we had two hops in the problem, didn't we? So we're going to have two hops in the product. So we're going to get a 4. This means the area of a triangle on the actual banner is 4 feet squared. And that's just for one of the triangles. We're finished with lesson 8.1. We're going to move on to 8.2, which is split into two parts. And it's about geometric drawings. We're going to talk about drawing three sides. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you join me for our next lesson. Bye.